14 months ago when we first all retreated into our homes, I remember thinking how this pandemic was like a time of Lent. There were things that we had to give up or from which we had to fast for a while, things like shopping in grocery stores or eating in restaurants or shaking hands with strangers, but which we would certainly take up again. I remember thinking at the time that this time without would make us much more grateful for those things when we could finally have them back. As that lockdown was extended from two weeks to four and then to six and then on and on, as Lent gave way to Holy Week and Easter, I remember thinking how this pandemic is like a death. Our old lives have passed away. There's nothing left of them. Our old way of being is gone. It's lost forever. The way we've always done it, the only way we've ever known, is dead. What will rise in its place? Now that what is old has died, what new thing is springing forth in God, waiting for us to notice it? Reflecting on how things have changed over this past year, it's begun to occur to me that this pandemic is also a little bit like Pentecost. On the Pentecost we read about today, the believers were gathered together in one place. When the Holy Spirit arrived, the doors and the windows were flung wide and they poured out into the streets. This pandemic Pentecost, this, what, this pandenticost? Pentademic? Whatever it is, it's kind of the opposite. It drove us from the streets out there into our own little sequestered rooms. But I've watched how the church has responded in this year, and I've seen the movement of the Spirit. In the before time, like most congregations, we were gathered together in one place. But now, we've been driven out of that place, out of our building, and forced to actually engage with the world. What we're doing now, Worshiping together online was once only the territory of televangelists and niche micro-communities. This medium allows us to not only remain connected with one another, uh, other members of our congregations in our homes, whether those homes are across town or across the country, it also means being able to connect with new people who have never even seen our building, much less walked into it. And in a world where people are becoming less likely to even set foot in a church, that's an important thing. For years, the church has been either ignoring or grudgingly acknowledging this new digital reality in which we now live. The pandemic has helped us to embrace that reality and to recognize the gifts and the benefits that this new digital world has to offer. Gifts and benefits that we have until now dismissed as irrelevant or unnecessary or extravagant. It appears that the pandemic has brought to light how wrong we were in our assessments. According to St. John, as Jesus prepared to leave his friends, he told them that this wrongness is exactly what he was leaving to show us. It is to your advantage I go away, he said. And I promise you, that sounds just as ludicrous to us as it did to those first ones who heard it. How could Jesus going away be a good thing? Isn't his return the one thing that we're all waiting for? And yet, St. John insists Jesus leaving not only was good, it was essential to his work of helping us to see and to know God. If I do not go away, Jesus continues, the advocate will not come to you. And when she comes, she will prove the world wrong about sin and righteousness and judgment. Not unlike the priests and the Pharisees of Judea, the church has become accustomed to finding God only in the places we've been taught to look. For many of us, that's inside a church building. It's among a group of people who call themselves Christians or Lutherans. Now we've all had to go look for God somewhere else, outside of our sanctuaries and our potlucks and our vacation Bible schools. God is in those places, yes, but I think that the Advocate has been using this time to show us how wrong we were to think that those are the only places that God can be found. 
as it happens, the place where we now find ourselves is exactly where scores of people have already been looking for and finding God. Although church attendance and religious affiliation have been steadily declining, people are not less spiritual. We're simply less likely to look for God in the places that we used to. Millions of people are looking for God in nature, in affinity groups built around common interests, in soul cycle, in CrossFit gyms, and in yoga studios. They've been seeking good news of hope and salvation in blog posts and podcasts. They've been listening to columnists and pundits and politicians. And what's more, people have been finding God in those places and among those people. Not everywhere or all the time, certainly, but people are connecting with God out here in the streets of Jerusalem in ways that many church folk never imagined. The church has characterized such people as a-religious, amoral, atheistic. But now this pendentecost has given us the opportunity to learn their language, or at least to start to, and to begin to understand from them how much we all have to learn from one another. And the learning curve this past year has been crazy for all of us, hasn't it? We've learned Zoom and social distancing. We've learned how to keep in touch when we can't touch one another. We've even learned which songs besides Happy Birthday are 20 seconds long as we've timed washing our hands. We've learned which jobs are considered essential and which are not. I personally have learned more about cinematography and video editing than I could ever have imagined. But perhaps one of the most important lessons we've learned is how much we still have to learn. For better or for worse, the doors and the windows have been thrown open and we have been driven out, out into the world, out into the streets. And now it's time for us to learn what it means to be church in this digital post-COVID world. I know we're tired. I know we just want to get back to normal, but friends, just as on that long ago morning in Jerusalem, there is no normal to return to. Our comfort is not in returning to where we came from, but in looking to what is ahead. And for this task, we have been given an advocate, a comforter, a sustainer, one who will lead the way and guide us into all truth. The Pentecost morning we just read about today began in chaos and confusion. And just look where God brought us from there. That story gives me hope for what lies ahead of us now. In spite of all the work, all the learning, I trust that in the midst of this global ca catastrophe, God is showing us that we do have the capacity and the capability to try something new to go out for ourselves into the streets and to start speaking new languages we've never before had to learn. Just imagine where God will take us from here.